Thank you for your interest in and support of Avalon Video Magazine. We hope you enjoy it. What has carnival rides, a parade, a queen pageant, a concert, a talent show, arts and crafts, cloggers, a tractor pull, an alumni football game, and loads of fun for the whole family, the St. James 57th Annual Grape and Fall Festival, that's what. The fun really got underway with the ever popular celebrity game. Everyone has fun at the sack race. Ray. Well, almost Ray. everyone. Number two. The Jello feed. And the pie eating contest. One feature of the festival is the wide assortment of crafts on display. Gardeners bring in their local produce for judging. Look at those tomatoes. Livestock competition is serious business for these folks.
Vendors offer a wide assortment of sometimes unique wares. It's fun sometimes just to come and look at some of these items. They're really unique. Selected as the queen, Miss Michelle Robinson. These young ladies work hard during the Queen pageant, and it's always exciting when Miss St. James is announced. Our congratulations to Michelle Robinson, Miss St. James of 1990. Let's give all of our five finalists a big round of applause. Michelle's first duties was to ride in the parade. Court, there's some terrific carnival rides. If you want your entertainment a little more relaxed, there's always the antique. Tractor pull. So get this before you're just in a good pearl. You never know who you're gonna run into at the festival. One of the big highlights of the St. James Grayson Fall Festival is the alumni football game. It's really great to see these guys out there in this heat, working, entertaining, reliving old memories. We really appreciate them coming out. And we look forward to seeing them again next year, at next year's. St. James Grape and Fall Festival. Copes County Bank, where the pride of local ownership benefits the customer and the community. Our professional staff to deliver quality service, competitive pricing on loans and deposits. Local ownership means that your deposits are reinvested in the growth of Phelps County, like loans to build new homes, loans to businesses which employ local people, education loans for our young people. With offices in Rolla and St. James, Phelps County Bank is an equal housing lender and safeguards your deposits with FDIC insurance.
there's not much here now, but for one weekend this September, the 10th Annual Ozark Extravaganza was a source of fun and enjoyment for folks from all over. Town of okay, Longshot next to Vichy Carlson. Airport offered Bear entertainment like Ellie Mae Clampett, Derry Brownfield, Gospel Groups, Antique Tractors, Terrific Food, loads of bargains on crafts, tools, and other items, chainsaw contests, horseshoe pitching, talent contests, great music almost all the time, helicopter rides. Concerts, tractor pull, Jerry Clower, apple bobbing, antique cars, you name it, it was here. We had a chance to talk with the extravaganza's Larry Schneider. It was very successful this year. We had the, the weather helped us out tremendously. Uh, we had very nice weather the four days, and the, a lot of attractions that people were really interested in, and they came out great. We had great numbers and made a very successful 1990 extravaganza. They, probably the biggest day was Saturday, and we estimated somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15,000 people on Saturday. So that was a, a very good day for that. I was working with the Gates, and I talked to people from as far away as Minnesota to Arkansas to Oklahoma to people that were just traveling through on the interstate and seeing the flyers somewhere and decided, hey, this may be a great way to spend a Friday evening or a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon. So as far as actual number of where people come from, we have no way of knowing other than just talking with them at the booth and, you know, talking with them in the event. The Elvis impersonator was probably the highlight of the Saturday afternoon show. We had uh, Lionel Cartwright on Saturday evening, which drew a lot of people, put on a very good show. We would like to do more of this thing. Uh, we need a little input from the community, from people that what they would like to see. And, you know, uh, the new acts coming on, uh, we're not aware of all of them, but we'd like, uh, you know, uh, participation from the community if they would like to see us try to get someone we would be willing to take their suggestion and try all possible ways to see if we could get one them. of the big hits and of this I live here. and I ain't Jerry thankful Clown. enough she said what you talking Always about I said you know how long it takes me to get a big Mac 15 seconds driving a four-door Cadillac Brome <laughs> Sudan Hossain, right I'll put it around your neck, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what is the name? Saddam Hussein, that's what it is. The more we promote Rollo, we're promoting ourselves, we're promoting the community, we're promoting the state of Missouri. So we ask for participation from anyone, whether it be uh, we're so diverse we can go from making little wood cutout dogs that you stand and poke in your yard to quilts to to handiwork, to just about anything. Uh, we try to cover from A to Z. And we're kind of catering to a diverse group of people, and everybody has different tastes and likes and things like this, so we try to have something there for everyone. For, for 1991, there will be a big surprise. That's as far as I can say right now, but there is a big surprise in the makings for the extravaganza, too. Caldwell Banker, Watsky and Baker Real Estate welcomes you to Rolla, Missouri. We are proud of our community. Each member of the company is active in the community, volunteering their time and energy to continue making Rolla a wonderful place to live. We know how important finding the right house, farm, or investment property is to you. Our clients, customers, and friends take part in over half the real estate transactions in our market. 
We bring you well over 100 years of combined experience in the Rolla real estate market and are committed to providing you the service you demand and deserve. Our goal is to provide the best service possible when buying or selling your property. Whether it's a new city anywhere in the country or a new home across town, we can help. We want to sell your home or help you find a new one. When we work with you, we offer personal service from beginning to end. Caldwell Banker, Watsky & Baker Real Estate, Rolla. The Youth Fair, sponsored by the South Central Missouri Arts Council and the Mark Twain Parent Teacher Organization, once again delighted kids aged 6 through 13 with dancing, music, magic, makeup, juggling, theater, and more. Stephanie Hansen and Laura Wiley instructed interested children in the art of dance. Jim Ziegler explained the fine art of traditional music. Eric Hall amazed kids with magic. Went through it. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was almost. I thought I had to get that. Well, explain it. Yeah, we have it. This one went under here. Off the high dive. <laughs> then they all went back to their rooms, and even though they were mixed up, they still managed to all find the same room. <laughs> and this is one we're going to. Uh, he throws nice and clean or quick. Garland Owens taught and encouraged kids to practice their juggling. One side to the other, kids focus on that. See, a lot of us, like Kevin was just a minute ago, all the throws were up and down in the middle, and that caused the collision. But now he's got it widened out, one side, and the other side. Great. And that's what we're at. Good. Thanks, Kevin, for showing us. Okay. Yes, I think you can. I know you can. Um, try it again. Let's see where you're at. Well, there, you were throwing from the hand that had one. Always throw from the hand that's two. Okay. Now, get your throw from one side to the other side. Larry Muse explains storytelling to a large group of interested kids. Okay. Rhoda Sachs instructed kids on book building. Because if you glue the animal stick to a book to be, do you want to be blue, do you want to be pink, do you want to be white, do you want to be blue? And you decide that, okay? What? I'm sorry. Okay. So decide what color book you want your book to be. All right? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. And then what you'll do, kiddos, Laura, not, I need your attention for just a second. You need to take some paper, and this paper will go inside here, okay? And this is your book, and this is where you'll write your story. All right? So, 
So, go ahead, Kevin, and Lear. Amy McCarthy directed children in outdoor games. Lynn Whitey's helped to motivate kids in the fine art of theater. Halloween makeup methods were taught by Jamie Anderson. Everyone we talked to had a really terrific time. Let's hope they get to do it again next year. JC's once again sponsored the punt, pass, and kick competition for boys and girls age 8 to 13. The new 10th Street Medical Center held a grand opening for the public. We spoke with Dr. Jim Phelps. The 10th Street Medical Center is a, is a group, uh, or is, a, uh, is the building name for, uh, that covers two groups, uh, the Rolla Family Practice, which is uh, a group of four family physicians, Ted Smith, Jim Phelps, Randy Huss, and Bonnie Ranney. And then there's Rolla Psychological Associates, Brian Susky and Dave Duncan. And um, we're two independent groups under the same roof, uh, but uh, share uh, share quarters and uh, share a lot of interest together, and uh, uh, I think work very harmoniously uh, together. Rolla is growing, and Iberg Construction is growing too. Iberg Construction offers a full range of services from planning and design through finished construction. Iberg Construction is pleased to be a part of Rolla's growth with projects like the new 10th Street Medical Center, the new employment security offices, plus Zeno's newly remodeled lounge and dining room. Iberg Construction is a full service builder of commercial properties, providing full project management, including site selection, architectural design and quality construction, plus commercial remodeling and renovation. Iberg Construction on East 10th Street in Rawa.
Dave Verkamp and Molly Malone. Verkamp and Malone are certified public accountants. Plus, Dave Verkamp is a certified financial planner. Your business and personal accounting needs can be met with Verkamp and Malone services on taxes, financial planning, accounting and auditing, and computer consulting. Dave Verkamp and Molly Malone's honesty and sincerity shines through, giving you personal attention and an organization large enough to provide complete services, but small enough to serve your individual needs. Verkamp and Malone, we serve you. UMR Student Union Board and various local sponsors put on the seventh annual minor triathlon. Participants, either as individuals or as teams, had to complete a 500-yard swim, a 15-mile bike ride, and a 5-kilometer run. Not everything went as planned. At the end of the long run, participants could look forward to cold orange juice, shaken, not stirred. together just before the homecoming parade. lit the bonfire. <laughs> the following day at halftime, the UMR homecoming queen was chosen. We talked with UMR coach Charlie Finley about the football minor. I think the way to, to describe our season this uh, year would be disappointing at the, at the best. Uh, a lot of frustrations, a lot of disappointment, uh, 
a lot of hard work went into uh, no wins and uh, now I've been on I think both ends of the pendulum here uh, in in just one decade uh, in 80 we were undefeated and in uh, 90 we didn't win a game so uh, a disappointment would be the best word to describe the season with uh, there's always some nice things that happen during the season. I've always enjoyed working with the type of young man that we have here at UMR. And it isn't that our kids didn't play hard. They played as hard as they uh, possibly could in uh, all but I think probably one game. I really didn't feel like we played our last game as, as well as we could have. But there's been in the last two seasons about ten uh, ball games, six this season, that we lost by seven or less points and uh, could have easily won those games had the uh, uh, things uh, fallen our way and it seems like that uh, in the past two seasons about everything has fallen uh, the other way and the opponents uh, uh, a favor so uh, sometimes those things happen and, and we forget those times where uh, we pulled one out at the end instead of losing one at the end and there's been many of those times too and we tend to forget those and only remember the bad things. We made, in the homecoming game, I, I think that we played pretty well, but we made a couple of critical errors in the game that uh, allowed uh, uh, Northwest Missouri State to, to uh, get uh, the 14 points on us, and, uh, um, and we, we were able to, uh, to just stay close and wasn't ever able to really do uh, the, some of the things that we had, had planned to do. Uh, was an exciting game, uh, uh, yet toward the end uh, we picked up a fumble to make it as close as it was and ran it back for a touchdown uh, Mark, uh, by Mark Diamond. And uh, that, uh, uh, on those particular games there, you know, you, it's, it's a one of disappointment, but it's still one of, uh, that you played good in and could have possibly won. Missouri Southern, we definitely could have won that uh, football game. It was a 14-7 to football game. Uh, our kids played well in the game, and we didn't move the ball as well as we liked. But uh, uh, particularly uh, in this game, when we hold an opponent to 14 point points, we feel like that we should win. We need to get more than 14 points. Uh, uh, modern football today, uh, 14 points isn't very many. When you've got a flat tire, the last thing you want are hassles. Sam's Tire Service can pick up your car, fix your flat, and return it to you hassle-free. And Sam's offers a complete line of tires for whatever vehicle you may own, along with dependable service personnel to correctly balance and align your wheel. Sam's Front End Shop has years of experience taking care of those other car care headaches, like tune-ups, lube jobs, mufflers, oil changes, air conditioning, brakes, state inspections, you name it. The one place for you and your car is Sam's Tire Service and Front End Shop, 709 Rolla Street, 364-3137. Dave's Barbershop in downtown Rolla is the place for quality haircuts and styling. Dave and Lloyd offer years of experience and a complete line of superior hair care products. Thursday is appointment day at Dave's. That's Dave's Barbershop, 705 Pine Street, 364-5639. Can't have a birthday without the birthday boy. Mothers Against Drunk Driving is 10 years old this year. And thanks to your support, so are a lot of other people. The week of October 21st through 28th was National Red Ribbon Week, and students in virtually all of the area's schools participated in activities focusing on alcohol and other drug awareness. We visited Newburgh High School, observed some of the in-class programs, and later spoke with several students who led some of the activities. Dealing with them by yourself, sometimes if you just bounce your feelings off another person, you know, you feel better about what you think or someone agrees with you. Or these other girls who are kind of, you know, really preppy-ish. I thought they were going to be snobs and stuck up and wouldn't talk to me. People 
categorize people too quickly. And that's, I mean, you know, talk to them about it, you know, and, and help them and, and, you know, just be there for them and, you know, communicate a lot with them. Work with them in a way that, in a way that, uh, in a way with, with them that they know you're understanding them and they know to some extent that you're feeling what they're feeling and you just you gotta understand them. that's the main that's the main key and not cut them down and stuff. I read Moving Week which was totally for off drugs to say off drugs. We had the first day we had wear a red ribbon which all the students wear a red ribbon. The second day we had hearts have a heart don't start which everyone wore a heart on their sleeve if they didn't want to start. And the third day we had um, drug awareness, which on the fourth hour of every class they talked about drugs and we had speakers and stuff. And um, then we had hugs are better than drugs, which we were little teddy bears with that slogan. And everyone was giving out hugs. And then we had a um, contest with um, you made your own anti-drug slogan t-shirt and whoever had the best one won. Then the kids are understanding more, like, you know, what it will do to you and how it affects you. And I think that they're like, uh, you know, they'll be able to withstand peer pressure, you know, if they have any. But I'm just hoping that they're, they know that, that there's a lot of other kids out there who feel the same way they do and that they can turn to a different friend instead of the one who might want to drink so that their self-esteem isn't lowered or, you know, they feel like they've got no one to turn to so that they have to drink and do what other people do. All these seniors and their parents, and this is a statement. This year's past, we have been a, had a little spirit in our The parents school, of the St. James Tigers had a lot to be proud of this year. this year. Has picked up tremendous For the first time ever, the, the St. James Tiger football team football made it to the state playoffs. Like All year, the Tigers had displayed a strong offensive game, as well as a fine defense. The Tigers' overall record for the season was 7-2, and two, and they were 3-0 and in district, and were awarded the 3A District Championship Trophy at the beginning of their state playoff game with Lutheran North. Although Lutheran North defeated the Tigers to go on to win the state championship, the Tigers proved themselves to be an outstanding football team. And maybe, well, who knows for sure, but maybe next year they'll even go farther. The official dedication of the new and remodeled Rolla High School was observed with the formal acceptance of the key to the school from the architect. Former student, teacher, and board member Wilma Turner spoke to guests. If you work upon brass, time will efface it. And if you build temples, someday those temples will crumble into dust. 
But if you work upon the immortal souls of men, imbue them with spirit, give them a just fear of God, and cause them to love their fellow man, you engrave upon those tablets something which will last through all eternity. To teach is to touch tomorrow. And this building is dedicated to teaching and to tomorrow. Representatives of the class of 2000 cut the ribbon to open the building. High School Volleyball team in the this season with a 4-7 record. A young team, the Bulldogs expect their experience this year will mean a better year next year. The Bulldogs girls tennis team had a successful season. We congratulate team members Maggie O'Keefe and Courtney Gibbons, shown here, and all the team members. The Rolla High School soccer team won its first ever game here against Springfield Central. Although they ended the season 8-11-1, They've shown themselves to be strong contenders for the future. Rolla High School celebrated its homecoming game by beating Lebanon 20 to 13. Homecoming queen Tina Harris and her court enjoyed the game and the homecoming dance the following evening when Brendan Bogan was announced to be king. We spoke with Coach Gary Miles about the football season. It was a very good season. It started out a little shaky, and, and uh, uh, coaching is typically full of highs and lows. And uh, we started out with a few lows, but we managed to turn it around and, uh, and uh, came back and uh, peaked at the right time and, and put our intensity level uh, uh, was quite high, and uh, we put it all together the last few weeks of the season. So far. Uh, the Waynesville ball game was pivotal. We had lost to Waynesville the last two years, and uh, this year it looked real frustrating early in the ball game. We were behind, but the character of this ball club came through, and, and we came out with a 12-7 win to ice up an undefeated conference and district title. Uh, against Eureka in the playoffs, we dug a hole. Uh, we were down 17 to nothing, but again, the character of this ball club came through, and we brought it back to 17-12 and made a ball game out of it, but just simply couldn't put the finishing touches to it, but it was an outstanding year. Say, where do you go to get your music? I go to the music station at 1023 Kings Highway in Rolla. They carry loads of great compact discs and cassettes featuring all the artists I've just got to listen to. A full selection of top 40, rock, jazz, classical, whatever I want. They've even got music videos. And they can order anything, usually in just a couple of days. The prices are great too. What more could you want? Check out the music station. Monday through Sunday, 10 to 7. If you're going to have a party and you need great music, call Bill's Music Machine. Bill has DJed over 500 dances since 1979, and he's got the largest selection of digital music in the area. Top 40, oldies, country, you name it. A great sound system, lights, music, dependability, everything you're looking for. 
Next time you're going to party, call Bill's Music Machine, 265-3806. If you ever attended Rolla High School, you probably know Isabel Estes. Earlier this year, Isabel had an opportunity to direct the song that she wrote that became the school song. Well, Mr. Uh, Lewis was the superintendent. Mr. Miller was the principal. And uh, we kept wondering, I was in the old building up there, you know, the old high school the, uh, on whatever street that is. And um, they just, we just was talking about it. I said, we ought to have a school song. Well, where are we going to get it? I said, well, I'll write it. <laughs> so I did. And I wrote the words and the music, and they it adopted it, and that's how it got started in 1937. And then I had to score it for band, too, because that's a different situation you know, than vocal. So then I had to write the parts for the band, and we got it all together, and we, it just got going, and it's still going. Oh, is that suck me to coming? Uh -huh. Well, I don't know. It just seemed it was peppy, and it went over, and the, and the children and the people just seemed to live, and it's still living. <laughs> I didn't think about that when I wrote it, but I, it just something I did. I don't know why, but I just loved. I loved my teaching, and I thought, well, let's do something about it. <laughs> I'm I'm very proud to think that they still use it. Now, many of the band directors have rewritten. They've taken taken the basics, but they have arranged the parts different than I did. But the first time it was very simple, because it had to be. But I'm glad because they've done a good job with it, and they play it at, the, at the, all the games and things like that. Have you enjoyed the income from all the royalties? Oh, sure. What royalties? No, oh, I started in Montgomery County, Missouri, north up north across the river. And that was my hometown of Belfar in Missouri. And uh, I went to college in Kirksville. And I got a 50-hour certificate. And I came back and started teaching fifth grade in my hometown of Belfar. And I taught there for about five years. But I did music and grades, and I, I did everything. <laughs> I can't know of anything I didn't do. And uh, then my husband was teaching. He was principal of the grade school. And uh, we were both teaching there, and then this job opened up here. And my uncle, who was John Aston, he was the manager of the Edwin Long Hotel. And he knew Mr. Higley, who was on the school board, and they had the vacancy in the music department. And also the vacancy of the coach in the coaching. But the music department didn't turn out, but my husband came down here as a coach. And I, of course, we came, moved to Rolla in 1935. And then the next year, the uh, music job opened up. The lady uh, left, and I got the music job, and I kept it then from then on. And I did all the music, vocal, instrumental, strings, brass, percussion, anything, you name it. And I started uh, my band then. I started the first band, the first Rolla High School band. They didn't have band when I came here. I started it from scratch. 
I had 28 people in it. And I had all the instruments, and I taught them to play them. And that's how we got our band going. And that was 28 people. And when I left here, we had 100 and something. I forgot how it was. Which one I left? When you, when you first when you started the band. Oh, when I first started it, 1936. Yes, I started the first band. They did have orchestra, and Mrs. Rapp, who was the music director, taught strings, but they didn't have any band in high school at all. So I started one, and that's where I had my fun too. The orchestra finally. Uh, died out because they got so interested in, and well, there wasn't a string teacher. And I could teach strings, but I, it was too, it was difficult because I wasn't a good string player. And uh, so I guess I just start let it <laughs> go. So we got band real going real strong. Well, when you start teaching with children in the first grade, in my field, mine was music, that's all I ever taught. But you see those little faces and they respond to you, you just, I, don't, I can't explain it, but as you go on through the grades and you know them, they come on up as long as I was there. And there they were, some of them really turned into being good musicians in band or orchestra, and many soloists. I took them to Columbia to the state contest. See, we had, the contests were here, and we had, we were rated on all, I had girls' glee club, boys' glee club, and the big chorus. And then I had solos of all kinds, instrumental and vocal. And when they got a one at those days, back in those early days, they had the state contest in Columbia. And then you were eligible to go up there and try. So we'd go to Columbia and uh, get our ratings. And we were very fortunate. We got some very, some of them got ones. Nobody ever got more than a two or less than a two. and. Uh, that was a big, big thing, and the parents were so cooperative. We'd take busloads of boys and girls up there to play, and the band, and the chorus. But they had to rate one here first. But that was just the most exciting thing about the contest that I could ever think. I couldn't hardly wait to see what the ratings were. <laughs> and they worked at it. And we took the bus load, see, two bus loads, because I had a lot of people then. And uh, we were up here between here and Jeff City, and um, this big, tall boy came up the aisle from the back, and I looked up, and I said, what's the matter, Joe? It was Joe Stoll, Don Stoll's brother. Miss Estes, I forgot my drum. He was a snare drummer. I said, what? I forgot it. I left it at home. And here we were, halfway to Columbia. I said, well, we'll just borrow one up there. Don't worry about it. Pretty soon here came a car just sailing along behind the bus, tooting the horn, and it was Joe's mother. She had found the snare drum, and she caught up with us and brought it to us. That, that was really something. And uh, we could have gotten one in Columbia, but she wasn't going to let that happen. She came and brought it to us. <laughs> And Joe was so sweet. He was a great big tall boy and spoke very slowly. Mrs. Estes, you know what? I forgot my drum. <laughs> that was something funny. In 1971, Isabel won a seat on the Rolla School Board. The following year, she presided on the school board. Well, those were wonderful days. They were eye-openers, too, because, you see, I ran for the school board right after I retired, and uh, I just was so interested, and I, I hated, I had to retire, because I was too old, see, so that was a law, and I couldn't come back to teaching in, in 1970, so in 1971, I filed for the Board of Education, and surprisingly, I was elected, and I really, had my eyes opened to lots of things that I had no idea of at all. Had to be done by the Board of Education. And I was very interested in it, and they were so nice, and we had good meetings, and not anything unusual, but just working, and I liked it. I was, I was on it for 15 years. I was on the school board for five terms, three-year terms, and that was 
really something I enjoyed because I just I couldn't get away from school. I, I, I still can't. I can't help it. It's just part of me, I guess. I think it's fair to say that those of us that know you, Isabel, think that you're just a part of us, too. If you haven't had an evening out at Leo Cardetti's Restaurant and Lounge, you haven't been out. Leo Cardetti's is the place to go for friendly atmosphere and quality dining. Leo offers unsurpassed Italian dishes, as you might expect, but did you know Cardetti's has superb seafood dishes, veal, and steaks? And don't forget to visit Cardetti's Lounge for friendly get-togethers. Next time you decide to spend the evening out, think at Leo Cardetti's Restaurant and Lounge downtown Rolla. Redeemer Lutheran Church recently celebrated its 15th year as a congregation. Members of the church and guests listen to Elder Floyd Hass report on some of Redeemer's history. Attendants were also inspired by the music of Don Wortham. some members of the man of Lutheran Church in Rolla, but it was before that. We felt that a second congregation was needed in the Rolla area, perhaps on the east or south edge of Rolla. So on June 30, 1974, 20 interested members, along with Pastor Howard Gelsbeck, met to organize. Of the 20, 14 were interested in becoming members of a daughter congregation. So from June 8, that had grown to 92 communicants and 45 baptized children to a total of 137. And as of 1190, or 294 communicants, 85 baptized for a total of 379 souls. So I think Redeemer has established itself in the area as a Lutheran congregation. With me. St. Patrick's Church hosted its Oktoberfest, featuring a buffet-style dinner and entertainment throughout the day, including bingo, quilts, raffle, crafts, plants, flea market, children's games, and much more. Members used the opportunity to explain church expansion plans to interested persons. Deck view, uh, hopefully getting some fairly close to being final as to what we're uh, going to do. Get capacity, add a daily chapel, a lot more uh, meeting room space, make it a little more handicapped and accessible. Hey, Mike, look at 
Rolla's First Presbyterian Church was one of many churches in the area to have a holiday craft bazaar. There were Christmas crafts and traditional craft items. The profits went to the Presbyterian Women and Mission Project. Donations are made from that to love and other organizations. We spoke with Linda Wagner and Pat Stoll. Fellowship uh, really draws the ladies closer together um, in our church. Um, we uh, like to take into account what is in style at the time. Uh, we also usually like to have a lot of things that are timeless. Christmas traditional, Christmas Victorian, uh, grapevine wreaths, those never go out of style. Uh, things for children, uh, baby items, because nobody does those handcrafts anymore. and you're getting a piece of somebody when you buy that. And uh, plus it's a good feeling to know that the money's going to a good cause, you're getting something to take home that you can show for it and enjoy, and that you've thought enough about somebody to buy them something. Why do we buy insurance? for the protection and peace of mind it affords us. And no one can protect your life, health, home, or car better than J.D. Roach, Shelter Insurance. J.D. is a second generation insurance agent offering dependable, experienced, hassle-free service with the shield of shelter. For protection and peace of mind on your life, health, home, or car, it's J.D. Roach, Shelter Insurance, 618 Pine in Rolla. The weather in mid-October was almost summer-like, and it was great for going to Merrimack Spring Park to enjoy the 1990 Old Ironworks Days, sponsored by the James Foundation. There was old-time American folk music, went napping, Pottery making, wood carving, folk singing, basket making. There was a cross cut sawing contest. <laughs> Apple butter making, log hewing. 
Blacksmithing. Some folks came down just to feed the trap. Stained glass making. And music everywhere. They had a fiddle contest. A banjo contest. There are folks just standing around playing music. They had cabinet making, quilting, gospel music, and many more interesting things to see. Meanwhile, in downtown Rolla, Pine Street was given over to the 13th Annual Arts and Crafts Festival, sponsored by the Downtown Business Association. It was a great opportunity to see your neighbors and shop around for great handcrafted items. The animal control officer had animals for adoption. And the care van offered free blood pressure and cholesterol. Might have gotten 88 on that one. All in all, a really fantastic weekend. Am I going to be considered one of the town kids? Downtown Rolla was a scary place to be on Halloween as kids from all around converged on downtown merchants to trick or treat. Some of the merchants look like they enjoy themselves more than the kids. Remember when PC meant personal computer? Well, these days, PCs are helping people accomplish more, from running large businesses to keeping track of households. PC Technologies of Rolla will show you how computers can help your life. Nick Preston owns PC Technologies, and Nick believes that new technology, plus old-fashioned service at an affordable price, can really improve the way you do things. PC Technologies offers you computers, programming, and computer service. Come see us. During the month of October, and during the Downtown Arts and Crafts Festival, many folks noticed the higher profile of the Rolla Police Department with their free child fingerprinting program, characters Crime Dog McGruff and Buckle Up Bear, and some of their other programs. We talked with Officer Cody Felkerson. This one's called Buckle Bear. He's to remind you to buckle up. Oh, oh. Uh, the Rolla Police Department has taken on a new role as a community policing program. 
and that is the public gets to know the officers a little bit more other than just being normal police officers in the community. We have families, we have, uh, we're taxpayers in the community just like everybody else, and we're, it's our way of letting the public get to know us a little bit better as well as letting the public get to know us. So our role basically involved in all of this is to get out and meet the public a little bit more away from the patrol car, uh, not necessarily getting back on a footbeat type of a program, but that is something that will come into play. People will see the officers more out of the patrol cars, on foot in the neighborhoods, in the businesses, and uh, getting to know people uh, just as basic citizens and letting them know that we are not necessarily the big bad guy that drives around the police car and does nothing to eat donuts and write traffic tickets all the time. So that's basically what the, uh, the program is all about, is getting to know your neighbor and uh, letting them get to know you. The, uh, the child uh, safety poster contest, that's the theme of the contest is safety. Anything based on safety for the kids and what they think safety is. Uh, it's for kindergarten through fourth grade and just anything that they want to put down on a poster uh, that has to do with safety. Uh, we had judges that went and judged them on the 30th when the posters were turned in and then they were, uh, the prizes were awarded here at the police station at the party on the 31st. Michael Snavely of the Rolla Police Department, City Administrator Merle Strauss, and Miss Susan Bates, who's a school teacher over at the Rolla Middle School. Now they judged the posters, it was 179 posters that was turned in out of the five schools, and it was not an easy, uh, an easy judging to, to take care of the winners, there was a lot of them that, that qualified to be winners, and all we looked on were winners. Anybody that turned a poster in did receive a prize, uh, from the police department and then the the grand prize winners the 20 winners that we had here at the police department uh, got the uh, the ribbons first second third place and honorable mention well as the uh, first place winners from each grade kindergarten through fourth get their pictures framed here at the police department and they'll be hanging up on the staircase as you uh, come into the police department down by the communications center yes at the arts and crafts festival we also did the child fingerprinting and we fingerprinted 530 kids in that one day. Uh, it was a large turnout for the Arts and Crafts Festival. We had a booth set up at 8th and Pine Street here in Rolla with the same information that we had out the form. Any type of information people would want on any type of activity that the police department for, provides in the way of safety or police service, we had that information there for them, drug and alcohol awareness, uh, DWI type things. And the child fingerprinting is, is the main thing that we have going there. That's the, our main uh, attention grabber, so to speak, that people come in there for. Uh, we, like I said, we, you know, fingerprint the child inside the child fingerprint book by actually taking all ten of the fingerprints and putting them down in the book, and then returning the book to the parents for them to put with their important paperwork to identify the child in the event that the child ever is uh, taken or disappears or runs away or whatever. Then we have something that they can immediately give to us that is current and up to date on what the child looks like what their fingerprints, uh, how, uh, what they look like and how they're identified. And then we can, like I said, if we recover the child or think that we might have the right child, we have a way to identify them right away. And uh, McGruff is one of our animated characters that we have. He's available year round here at the police department for any type of a program that you want to have put on. If you want McGruff to make a special appearance, McGruff will be glad to stop in. So we have him here year round. We also have available through the Missouri Division of Highway Safety, we have Vince and Larry and we also have Buckle Up Bear, which is available, that we have to get on a reserve type basis where we would have to order them and have them come in here to the police department to put on a program. So that would have to be made in advance. McGruff can be done on a short notice, but Vince and Larry and Buckle Up Bear would have to be done on a re reservation type of a basis. But we do have them available. They all provide an important message. It helps us to relate to the kids a little bit easier for kids that are a little bit scared of the police. It helps us to kind of break that ice a little bit. And believe it or not, the senior citizens and the older folks also like to see them from time to time. So they're a big attention getter, and they help us with public relations within the community from all age brackets. We also have Neighborhood Watch Program, which is available within the city limits of Rolla. We have 24 Neighborhood Watch areas that are active right now. We're working on making it a little bit more active than what it is, keeping people involved, keeping in touch with our local community. And for people that live in the community that don't have a Neighborhood Watch Program, and would like to get one started, I will be out and about. Uh, I'm here at the police department at 364-1213. Call and leave a message and I'll be glad to get with you on that. Or I will be out in the community on foot. When you see me in your neighborhoods and I happen to come up and knock on your door, if you don't live in a neighborhood watch area, or if you do and you want to get actively involved, just let me know. We'll be glad to help you out and get you, you, get you started on that. All right, whether, whether you live in a, a $50,000 home or you live in an apartment, it doesn't matter. But that's just basically what you got right there. Okay, how many of you watch TV with me?
How many of us wore our seatbelt? I'm riding my baby seat. Good. Good. That's real important. The Rolla Junior Club sponsored its sixth annual Arts and Crafts Fair in mid-November. There were dozens of vendors selling assorted craft items to hundreds of enthusiastic visitors. The weather was so good that several vendors set up shop outside. One big feature for the kids was a visit by Santa Claus. We spoke with junior club member Candy Metcalf. This is the sixth annual uh, Arts and Crafts Festival for Rolla Junior Club. We had lots of um, wonderful vendors with various craft items, and the money that we will be getting from this goes to community projects in Rolla. Avalon Video Productions is proud to bring you the Avalon Video Magazine. There's more local coverage coming up, but we'd just like to take a moment out to thank you again for your support. The purpose of this tape is primarily to present a permanent video medium for the local folks to get to know one another and to document on video a little of the spirit of living in the Phelps County area. And, just incidentally, to show you what Avalon Video Productions can do for you. If you have a video project or an idea that requires more technical effort than you can handle, maybe we can help. Call or write. We're also interested in helping local producers move their ideas into the public eye, maybe onto future issues of Avalon Video Magazine. Call us, write us, let us know what's on your mind. If you like what you've seen here, send us your name, address, and phone number. We're going to keep a mailing list to notify you in advance of the next Avalon Video production. There will be no obligation to buy. Call or write today. And thanks again. Basketball season is upon us, and we traveled to Newburgh High School to see the girls' team and the boys' team scrimmage. Avalon Video Magazine will be covering more games at Newburgh, Rolla, St. James, and UMR. Local Boy Scouts in the Scouting for Food project collected over 17,000 pounds of food in the Merrimack District. Collected food went to needy members of the area community. school celebrated a Thanksgiving feast, with many students participating dressed as Indians or pilgrims. Over the last weekend in November, Rolla High School put on the play All Because of Agatha by Jonathan Troy. I need a little fatting up. Still. No, coming back here. No, Dr. Randolph was about to tell us, but never did. Oh, come on, Dr. Sawyer. Start from the beginning. Yes, do. Well, last year, at this very same time, the witch, Agatha Falls, made her appearance in this very room. One number she was in the world beyond, and the next. She's standing there with that doorway. The wind is blowing through her dark, matted hair. You mean you actually saw her? As clearly as I see you now. 
Well, what does she look like, Madame Masolda? It's almost impossible to describe her. She looks very much alive, and yet, yet there was a shadowy, transparent quality about her. <laughs> On December 1st, the annual Rala Christmas Parade was attended and enjoyed by hundreds of area people. Once again, thank you for your support. Please write and let us know what you thought about Avalon Video Magazine. 